Through the lens of my camera, the vast landscape unfolds. Compelling me to venture beyond the familiar. Each week, from one city to another, from province to province, I unearth new layers of my culture and heritage. In this episode, join my family and me as we delve into Alangapo's culinary tapestry, juxtaposing it against Pampanga's flavors, and nestled in the embrace of Zambales Mountains, discover a friend's haven of tranquility, a brand new resort. What's up everybody, welcome to Family Day. We are headed to Alangapo to experience the food, the sounds, the sights. So join us as we head to Alangapo. Let's go, Family Day. Yay! From Pampanga, we journey an hour southwest to Subic Bay. Through the old route, Via Lubao added an hour before the Luzon Expressway was built. I found that SLX driving to Longopo offers not only a smoother ride, but also a scenic treat, making family days even more special. First stop on the trip is to the Pagasa Public Market. Our good friend Brianna owns the market. There's um, about what five to six food stalls there and she also has like a fruit stand and just various it's it's a it's a really big area and i'm super excited to check it out and uh, one of the things i want to do is kind of compare the food scene in Longopo versus pampanga we're gonna head to the nlax and before you know it we will be in subic let's go All right, everybody, we made it safely, but before we get into the food market, I just want to like kind of share a story with you. We got pulled over. I totally missed, actually, you know what? No, I didn't miss an intersection. There was no stop signs. And I mean, for the most part, it's just you have right of way. But apparently there was uh, some police officers kind of hiding on the corner and they pulled me over and they said it was a first come, first serve intersection with no stop signs, which is crazy, but I live in the Philippines now, you know, we, we go with Filipino rules. Thankfully, the uh, officer was very nice and he let us go he, with a warning. You know what I mean? Let us go with a warning. Anyways, let's go get some delicious food. We're gonna start off with a giant ass taco. I think this taco is meant to be eaten with a fork and spoon because the shell is super thin, but made fresh to order. I think they make these tacos themselves. We got cheese, beef, shredded lettuce, looks like some tomatoes. So you definitely can't like pick this taco up and eat it. Well, I mean, you can. All right, let's try. Wow, that was really good. Now, it's not like a taco you're gonna find in Mexico like ever, I don't think, but for Filipino Sanders, this taco is amazing. It is good. Thank God they provide these wonderful napkins for all of the, um, <laughs> mess that we're gonna make. All right, we got dinner one. I'm not even gonna like cap on camera and say I like dinner one. I don't like I'd rather have tit than like traditional Tagalog style tit dinner one because it's just a little intense for me but we're gonna try it today. Let's see. All right so uh very chocolatey, very porky. Wow. You know what? This is good. I'm very surprised. So, why it's good? Because it's super light. It doesn't have that that tinny, irony flavor. The pork's super savory I and mean, super soft. Wow, this is like the first time I've actually legit liked the Iguan. Had to get the seasoning. I mean, you know, we are doing a little bit of comparison versus, you know, Angeles San Fernando versus uh, Olongapo. So, let's see how they do their seasoning. So compared to like a traditional Kabangbangan style 
seasick. This has a lot more pork belly than normal. It looks a little saucier. Let's see. Oh, it's good. Yep. Definitely not a Kapong Pangan style. Seasick, it's more along the lines of a Tagalog style mainstream seasick, but the flavor's there. Maybe a little bit more onions, like the only thing I'm looking for. But it's good. Try one some goto on this wonderful hot and humid day. Which is almost every day here in the Philippines, so. Goto with pork intestines. That's cool. Honestly, at this point, all of the goto I've tried here is pretty standard. Tastes the same. Delicious. Um, I'd get it again. It's good. Last but not least, pork caldereta. So this caldereta doesn't really have any veggies. It's just straight up meat and sauce. Straight to the point. It's okay. Seems like they use like those um, pre-made caldereta sauce packs. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's good. Not bad. Maybe I wouldn't get it again, but it doesn't taste bad at all. It's very flavorful. What was that? I don't know what that was. I'm gonna eat it anyways. All right, for dessert, we got some halo halo, and then I ordered some ice cream from the ice cream man. We got avocado and C-H-I-Z, chiz. So that's my thought. Wait, it's one of Did you get this? Oh yeah, uh, sorry, so C-H-I-Z, cheese, avocado, from the, is this technically the dirty ice cream? Take it, take it, go ahead. Is this dirty ice cream? Dirty ice cream? I don't know what makes it dirty, but. Dude, that's so good. Wow, that is good. That's some solid ice cream. Now, for those of you who never had cheese ice cream, it's like, not what you imagine. It's not like American cheese. It's not like a Swiss cheese. It's a very subtle, creamy, and sweet ice cream. It's good. It's delicious. Now, before you knock on avocado ice cream, the GOAT, Tom Brady. Look it up. Google it. Avocado ice cream, Tom Brady. Shit's fire. Real bits of avocado. Not too sweet. Very creamy. I feel like Ren would love this. You, you know Ren's never had ice cream. Should we give him no. his first bite? No. We just don't want him to have a sugar addiction like uh, like myself. You know what I mean? So trying to be good parents. No, no, no. We can make him. Ice he will have ice cream one day, but we can make him avocado ice cream. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Oh my god. On to the hollow hollow. The last hurrah. So not only does that taco stand sell tacos, but they sell halo halo. Dude, this thing melted quick. Oh my god. Pro tip. If you're gonna eat halo halo here, you better get to it fast. This shit melted already. But really good. Mmm. A little bit of ice cream here. Oh yeah, cheese ice cream. Cheese ice cream in the, the hollow hollow. Let's go. Did I just invent something? No, I didn't. <laughs> Coming here. I've never felt more Filipino. I got a ticket on the way here. I'm eating hollow hollow in the hot weather and just eating some delicious Filipino food at the Pagasta Market. So, unfortunately, Brianna was not, was not able to meet us because she didn't have a driver. So, we're going to head to her. We're going to head to her resort, uh, newly built, opened up maybe like a couple months ago at the most. So, I'm super excited to see what she built from the ground up. I heard it's beautiful. There's a pool. This is where we'll be staying for the night. So, let's head over to her resort. Shout out. Shout out what? Oh, shout out, shout out. Okay. Pasok, pasok, pasok. 
Brianna and I share a bond that spans 16 years. Our real world business school, the sweltering confines of a Filipino kitchen. Recently, amidst the hustle of her busy day at her new resort, we found a quiet moment to reconnect. We reflected on our shared journey, celebrating how far we've come in both life and business. The goal was to, every time I go to the Philippines, I would love to go somewhere, like somewhere exclusive where you can spend time with your family. I wanted to have a business that can help me to support my family better. I went to this place, there's one in Sambanas, it's called Sundowners and it's a beautiful resort, it's exclusive and so we we checked in and then I woke up at 6 a.m. So, so we jumped into the swimming pool and then I told myself like we're so deprived working in the United States. Yeah. Like I had to wake up 6 a.m. just to make the most out of it because it's not something that we usually do. Like our routine there when you wake up, you just wake up and then sometimes you have coffee while driving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But here, when you wake up, it's just chill. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure you can relate. Yeah. Right? It's very chill, very calm. That's why I wanted to build something like this so that even if I no longer work in the United States, I can still make the same amount of money here in the Philippines. But now that it's built, I I am more inspired to, to do better because I'm excited on how many families will change their lives. Wow. I'm actually really glad I, I put you on camera because I didn't really like, I mean, I knew your reasons why, but like the intricate details of that. Yeah, it yeah. It makes me feel like, I know it's kind of weird because we're friends, but like, mm -hmm. I feel proud of you. You know Thank what I mean? You. So it's really cool. No, it's different now. Like I, cause you know how our mind, our mindset change as you grow. Yeah, yeah. So before I'm thinking about the money, money, money. Oh, when am I gonna get the money back? Like yeah. when it's gonna be the ROI? But now when I started being here and I see the, I see my staff and I am, I am more excited. Like what else can I do to help them? Yeah, because now I can provide work. Yep. You know, I'm sure you can relate. Like I, I always bring it back to peace, love, and boba. But I think that's one of our like secrets to success is me and Carla. We, we make sure that we put our staff first. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Like we're still open to this day. Mm -hmm. So maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But I feel like I learned so much with that place just by working there. The we we both put in a minimum of ten years there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, basically our our bosses, my my parents, they were yeah. just like, good luck, figure I it out. I and mean, like what 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 learning lessons do you think you took from that place you know what i like about working there especially when we were young yes. right mm -hmm. so there's no expectations right yeah they they led us to what we think was right yeah yeah but then if we make mistakes we remember it because we're the one who did it yep right yep. and we're always accountable for what we did yeah just like what you said yesterday when I was complaining to Mike, you said, you sound like my dad. Yes, diba? yes, yes. Diba? Yep. Kasi, I mean, you're not aware, but innately, you're yes, becoming yeah. like them. Because, yeah. you, you, I mean, there they are coaches. Yep, yep. You know, they're the ones who's telling us, this is how we should do things. But sometimes, I myself, I don't even understand before. Like, oh, I, I felt like, I was doing it, but then it's still not enough. Yeah. But then again, when you're a business owner, you see a lot of yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Like even if I'm here, I see a lot of things that they don't see. It's like I have, like my eyes are so... Yeah, you see it different Like now. 1880. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so one thing, I saw, I saw Brianna was just saying all these things like about her place and the things that she has to, she has to do and I told her she sounded like my dad because one thing my dad will always do no matter what like he owns the place has done everything in this uh, in this world that he needs to do in the business world and yet he'll still clean the toilets yeah and he was complaining to me he's like the bathrooms weren't being cleaned right and, and she's cleaning the toilet like you know what like someone on the outside who doesn't have their own business they think probably maybe I have to stop doing my yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but no it's not true like just like with me and my wife, we're when we're back in California, when we're working, we're cleaning the toilets. Yeah, me so. too. Free. 
That was great. Seriously, thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. I, you had fun. I did. This place was amazing. Yeah, and thank you for visiting. You captured that vibe that you, you described earlier perfectly. Good job. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Are you guys familiar with the phrase, mas, mas tarap, dito? It's something that a lot of people who travel here or visit from wherever they're living abroad say. What does it mean, mas, mas tarap, dito? Essentially, it's like the Philippines is better. You know, the old phrase was, it's more fun in the Philippines. I forgot. They changed it to something else, whatever it may be. <laughs> but, and that's something like I've been pondering on a lot is if it is better here because I'm struggling between thinking where is my home now is it here is it California I mean when, when we moved here it was only supposed to be for a short amount of time yet we're still here yeah I know and for the best reason ever but I have to say this like I love being an American I love everything associated with the good and the bad. Born in Guam, raised in California, and I say that proudly. I love it all, but you know, coming here and learning about my culture, about what it is to be Filipino, it's something I will never ever take for granted. Right? Yeah, and legit, the best decision I've ever made in my life, entire life is coming here and I know eventually I'm gonna have to go back and when I do get back, I'll have some decisions to make like whether home base will be in California or here. That's gonna wrap up this video for the week. I appreciate you guys and if you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, push in a thousand and that's my short term goal for now. So I love you guys and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Can you give hearts? Can you give hearts? Hearts.